Hello people, welcome back to the Digital Aviator channel. Welcome to the new year, happy 2019. And we're going to kick off this new year with this episode of Flight Sim School, where we're finally going to get in the air and we'll learn the normal takeoff procedure. And as always, don't apply this in the real world, keep it all just for your simulator only. All right, so um, we are finally going to get in the air and it's actually rather simple. However, um, there's quite a lot of things that happen very quickly off the shoulder in quick succession during the takeoff. The same is true for landing. So that is why the takeoff and the landing are the most dangerous situations uh, for yourself mentally, because you have to focus on a lot of things at the same time. You have to do a lot of things, but also because you are still close to the ground and you're going at pretty quick speeds. So it's important that we learn a a uh, solid foundation, which is a normal take of procedure, um, which we can uh, imprint into our, into our brains and always apply the same steps, which makes sure that we have a safe takeoff. Now to help with this procedure, I've made a little diagram um, right here. And you can download that on my website, digitalaviator.net. There's a link in the description down below to uh, those pages. And uh, this shows you all of the steps in the order where you need to take them. So we've already uh, talked about step one, the before takeoff checks. And right now we have just lined up. Normally you wouldn't come to a stop on the runway, of course. You would just keep going and apply full power. Um, but uh, yeah, right after we enter the runway, we line up. We make sure we are aligned with the center line. And then we start our clock. So we go to our elapsed time mode on the stopwatch. And we just click control to start a stopwatch. Now we use a stopwatch for quite a few things. It's always handy to keep track of time, uh, just so you can see you know, how long you've been flying, when it's time to do checklists. Um, and, but the most important thing is for navigation. So it's a good habit to, you know, to start uh, learning this habit of starting the clock whenever you start your flight, uh, because it's useful for a lot of things. So we line up, we start the clock, we apply full throttle, we slowly uh, advance the throttle full forward. And um, as we do that, the RPM will come up. We will start to accelerate. And what we want to do is we use our rudder pedals, probably some right rudder to stay on the center line. The plane has a tendency to turn to the left. Then as we are accelerating, of course, we're looking primarily outside, but we do a quick glance over to some instruments. We check a few things. First thing that we check is the power set. So I look at my power, my RPM, and I don't want it to be higher than the red line, and I don't want it to be lower than to, uh, 2000 RPM, so it needs to be in the green arc. Uh, when it is within the green arc, we have enough power for takeoff. If it's below that, we probably have, do not have enough power to actually fly. And of course, if it comes below or above the red line, then we have some other problems and we risk damaging the engine. So then we would abort the takeoff. Then we quickly check that my oil pressure and temperature are in the green as well. So they should stay like this inside of the green arc. And when we check that my airspeed indicator is alive, so right now the airspeed indicator is still on the top, I want to make sure that it's coming up. Uh, if it's not coming up after a few seconds, then we might have a uh, blocked speedo tube or something else is wrong with the indicator. Um, and uh, yeah, then we're just accelerating and everything just is very quick. Uh, this all takes maybe two or three seconds where we do this. And um, especially if we are lightly loaded, we don't have a lot of weight, we reach step five very quickly. At 55 knots indicated airspeed, we rotate. That's our VR or rotate speed. Um, and that's at 55 knots, so right here. <clears throat> so when I reach 55 knots, I slightly pull on the yoke, not too much, only enough so that we see the nose come up a little bit and I hold the yoke there. I don't want to pull back too much, otherwise we risk slamming the tail on the ground and then we have all kinds of other problems, we don't want that. Um, so yeah, then at 55 knots I slightly get the nose up, that gets some uh, air under the wings and hopefully allows us to take off and then we get into the air. Now what we want to do then, as we are climbing, I want to also accelerate to our VY speed, which is 75 knots indicated airspeed. VY is the best rate of climb speed. So if our airspeed is lower than 75 knots or higher, we cannot climb as much in, a sh in the same amount of time as if we were at that VY speed. Uh, in other words, we climb the most amount of feet in the shortest amount of time. Now, the reason why we want this is because we're still close to the ground. I don't want to stay close to the ground. I want to get nice high up, uh, maybe at least a thousand feet or so above the ground um, uh, before I do some other maneuvers. And uh, of course, if we do have an engine failure, I want to have some altitude to work with. So it is a good idea to, ke to get high up above the ground as, as, as quick as possible. Uh, another reason is for noise abatement. Uh, we don't want to fly close to the ground for too long because people living near the airport will have 
have a cont uh, continuous um, hum of air airplanes flying over the house. So we want to get nice high up. So how do we accelerate? Well, this is actually um, something that we probably want to discuss in, discuss in more detail in a different video. Um, we can't use our power because it's already at full power. And of course, I'm not going to lower it if we go too fast because I want full power to climb the best uh, at the best rate. If I have lower power, we can't climb at the best speed. So the power is not how we change our airspeed. We actually use our pitch. So if we are accelerating, the airspeed's coming up and we reach 75 knots, I just slightly pull back more so that we kind of trade off some of that acceleration into altitude. And then the acceleration stops, hopefully. The airspeed is balanced at 75 knots. Um, and if we're going too slow, I just pitch down a little bit to let the airspeed build up more than I pitch up once we reach 75 knots. So we use our pitch to control airspeed. Now it just so happens that the takeoff trim setting uh, allows the plane to be very balanced at 75 knots. And of course, it has been uh, thought about that. That is why we have the takeoff trim setting. Um, <clears throat> and what this does is, as soon as you reach 75 knots and you stabilize it by pitching up or down, you don't really have to pitch yourself anymore. The trim basically takes care of that. So as long as you have your takeoff trim setting here, um, you should be able to maintain 75 knots pretty easily. The plane will happily climb uh, and you will stay at 75 knots. The only thing you have to worry about is keeping the plane uh, uh, horizontal in, uh, with zero degrees of bank because we want to fly the runway heading for at least a few seconds. So that's how we accelerate to 75 knots. Then uh, there's a few things we do after that. Uh, you know, we have the plane stabilized at 75 knots at roughly 300 feet. This is not really a solid boundary where we need to check this, but you know, this is a nice altitude where we want to start bringing our flaps up. If we have our flaps down, uh, some takeoff procedures, for example, a short field takeoff procedure, we have our flaps set to 10 degrees. So uh, once we're nice and high above the ground, about 300 feet, we get our flaps up. Uh, if we already had our flaps up, we just verify that the flaps are solid and up, not hanging loosely down or something like that. And then at about 500 feet, we have uh, gained enough altitude so that we can turn to a different heading. Of course, runways are usually laid out uh, in such a way that there's not really a lot of people living in the extent of the runway. Uh, that's actually a little, I guess, some kind of beach resort here. But, um, you know, more, uh, often you want to keep flying the runway heading and then uh, as soon as you have a nice altitude around 500 feet, you can turn to a different heading, overfly some other buildings. But yeah, 500 feet is about the minimum altitude where you want to get close to buildings and uh, villages, stuff like that. So. Then we can turn and uh, then once we have some time on our hands, we can actually do our after takeoff checklist to make sure the plane is set up and everything is still working. All right. So let's take a look at this in action. Get back into the plane. So the first step is to start the clock. Oh, and uh, before I do that, I'll make sure I set my mixer to rich because I had it lean as I was on the ground. So I release the parking brake, we'll start the stopwatch. Not that we're going to use it. Set full power, and I can see my power is in the green range. I use my rudders to stay on center line. My oil temperatures and pressure are green. Airspeed is coming up. I look forward. Here is 55 knots. I slightly rotate, only on this amount. And now we are in the air. I let the airspeed accelerate. Here's 75 knots. I pitch back a little bit more. And now I can almost let go of the yoke, and the plane is completely stable at 75 knots. That's what a trim does for you. So I want to keep flying the runway heading. That's why it's nice to have the uh, runway heading set in your heading indicator. And uh, well, make sure that the flaps are up. And we just uh, start looking around. So you can't really look straight, straight ahead. The only thing you see is air. So look to your left and to your right to see what the plane is doing. Uh, see where you are going. Here's 500 feet above the ground. And by the way, these altitudes are above ground level, not above sea level. So make sure you add the ground elevation to your altimeter to read the correct uh, elevation of the ground. You don't really want to make too steep turns. I wouldn't say that you want to turn uh, more than 10 degrees of bank. Uh, I will make a video pretty soon about making medium turns up to 30 degrees of bank, but uh, you'll see that there's a few more things involved with turning. Uh, you're using the rudders and uh, the plane will pitch down in a turn. So, you know, all kinds of crazy things happening. But yeah, now that we are happily uh, climbing, 
we can actually do our after takeoff checklist. So after takeoff checklist, you can also find on my website, starts with mixture set. So we want to set our mixture for the correct altitude. We are still below 3000 feet above sea level. So we can leave our mixture rich, but as soon as we cross 3000 feet, we probably want to start thinking about leaning for peak RPM again. Then the next item on the takeoff, on the after takeoff checklist is power, airspeed and trim. So what we are, want to achieve here is some kind of airspeed and some kind of climb rate. And we do that by controlling the power and the trim. And you kind of want to think about this in this order. You set your power to something you want, for example, full power in this case. You set your airspeed by manually pitching, and then we can trim with the trim wheel to maintain that airspeed. Now, I will make a video about power management and trimming uh, very soon. So if that doesn't make sense to you yet, don't worry. Uh, it will make sense, hopefully, after that video. This will make pretty soon. So then on the checklist, flaps up. Just verify it again. Actually, I already did verify it, of course, during the climb out. But we just verified, uh, yeah, we make sure on the checklist as well that we did verify it. Engine instruments, we take our time to fully check all of them. These are still green, vacuum is green, amps are at or above zero. The fuel flow can be above the green if you are at full power and the mixture is set to rich. That's normal. EGT, we will only care about once we start leaning in a moment and of course we monitor the fuel consumption during the whole flight so that is still should still be as expected um, and then the last thing that we want to do is that the clock is indeed started so that's also on the checklist perfect so there's only one thing uh, remaining now uh, and that is to level off at some point but i'm actually going to keep climbing and i will show you uh, leaning in the air it's basically the same as on the ground we're getting close to 3000 feet we can actually lean right now again 3,000 feet is kind of a rough estimate where you probably want to stop flying at rich mixture. You can lean before that, you can uh, keep flying at rich a little bit after 3,000 feet. Not like a solid boundary where something happens. But yeah, it's the same thing as on the ground. We pull the mixture out. Uh, because I'm still very close to the sea level, I don't really expect a rise in RPM. But we will probably see a drop. Yeah, we see the RPM drop. We push it back in just before the drop happens and we find the highest RPM we could find. And then we want to look at that EGT indicator and you can see the white needle has moved up and you can actually rotate this red needle. Now what you want to do is you set the red needle to the current EGT setting. I know that my mixture is currently okay. And this is the exhaust gas temperature that we get from that. So if your mixture is set correctly, you have the best performance and thus the engine runs the hottest. Uh, unless there is some other problem like a fire. Uh, but uh, in normal situations the engine runs the hottest when you have the mixture set correctly. As we keep climbing, or we change our power uh, settings, um, the oxygen level change uh, changes and we probably want to adjust the mixture. And we can very easily see if we need to adjust the mixture, because our EGT will no longer be at the peak performance, which we have just set with the red line. So if I keep climbing here for a few thousand feet, you probably see the EGT drop a little bit, and we need to lean again. So this is a nice tool for us to see if we need to re-lean the plane and uh, think about leaning again. Anyway guys, that is the normal takeoff procedure and uh, also the initial climb. During the climb we don't really do anything. Um, I have another checklist uh, in a moment when we level off, but uh, in the next few videos we'll learn how to correctly level off, how to start climbing and descending again, and how to change the airspeed. And we'll do that with trim and the power. So stay tuned for that and thank you for watching.